was listening earlier on to one of those fellows who identifies as a Blade Runner. And he was talking to uh, Hartley Brewer. And, um, you know, t th his notion of right and wrong and, like, property, non-existent. The, the man was a, uh, a, a criminal, a, a lowlife. And it'd be, um, be amazed how many people are like that as well. He didn't have a problem just chopping them cameras down. Gave himself a code name, called himself Captain something or other. And um, when Hartley Brewer put it to him, which is a lame thing to say to someone who, you know, it has done the deed, doesn't give a fuck about the law. She says, all that's going to happen is they're going to put those cameras back and then you're going to... that." That's going to, um, the, the public's going to have to pay for that again out of the council tax. So you're actually attacking the, it's like, you think that argument's going to work on someone who's already chopped a lot of fucking cameras down. It's like, that's what he's hoping for. The only, um, the only, um, real language that the council understands is when things are cutting into budgets and causing them headaches and they're having to make cutbacks and find money from elsewhere and they're having trouble with their insurers and that's the only way to send them a message is to cost them any money that's the only language they speak but she's like no you shouldn't be doing this you'll make the people suffer and it's like you know the people might have to suffer a bit to overturn this tyranny <laughs> it's like uh, uh, the, the Blade Runner characters it's like um, it's already been done because right people who think on the level that I do right they there are they're everywhere they just don't have YouTube channels they're, they're, they're private people who you don't know but that immediately seeing the scam or the angle is is very it's, it's a common skill amongst uh, cheeky criminals or people of that nature, they will uh, come up with a new angle or exploit long before the rational, right-minded person picks up on what the crack is, as they say. The years in advance of them. So it's like if 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 I I, I put it this way, it's like if I come up, if I see an angle or something, and say it on the internet, I'm only the hundred and fiftieth person of the, the the law class who sees that angle of the crack i'm only the 150th who's thought of it it's like there are those in the world who've got a ready-made scam and marketplace for that cam for those uh, cameras it's like the smart guy in the first instance i weighed up it's like right if you want all them cameras down you start rumors that they've got precious metals inside them it's probably true If you can make the, get the message out there that Mr. Smackhead and Mr. Crackhead can get 50 quid for the bits that are in it, even when it's a thousand quid worth of equipment, he'll go ahead and nick himself four. So all you had to do, all you had to do was suggest there was something valuable in there that's worth breaking them up for. And you'll find yourself a load of self-selecting experts in thievery who'd otherwise be stealing catalytic converters, nicking them. It's like there's things that go on, or used to go on a lot more before the pandemic, but then kind of suddenly ceased after the lockdown where people, groups of three men usually driving around in vans looking for things to steal and they'd, they'd, they'd be just predators. Marauders, not from the town they're in, from another town, they drive around, they're looking for a model of car they can steal something off, or they're looking for just a general weak looking situation that they can exploit, whether it be for a street robbery, whether it be whatever they can see they can steal, and they'd be cruising around in white vans, and if anyone tugged them it'd be my oh we're, uh, we're removal guys, we're couriers, we're white van marauders, it's like the white van marauders 
if you tell them that those CAS cameras or US cameras have got um, gold in them, which is, hey, you know, that's not unrealistic. They will steal them. And no one, has, no one has to do anything. Just give the lead to the thieves and they'll set about doing it. And if they do find out that there is something of value in there, the word gets around, oh, it's even better than we thought. We can strip these down for components. There's, there's off-the-shelf technologies inside these that are actually cross-compatible with other devices. You know, like that, the, the, you know, the, the, the tyre. Pe not a lot of people know this, but, you know, the tyres on a company vehicle work just as well on a private car. Not a lot of people know that. You know, that spur tyre in that company car might just be the same size as the one on your one of your cars and it might be a matter of, is there a time to do a switcheroo? And it's like, there's always a time to be a switcheroo. You know that company cars are faster and can like get to 40 and 50 mile an hour sometimes in reverse? You know that third gear and the red line are, you know, they, they deserve to be together at all times if it's a company vehicle and you're not paying for the fuel. There's a line of thinking that sees that public property is um, fair game. Private property, different. You're messing with people's shit. You're messing with people's shit. They come after you. If you're messing with the council shit, no one's coming after you. There's no repercussions. You can steal anything that the government owns that's not nailed down. And there's plenty of people in the world who'd be like, fair enough. And no one's reporting you to the cops. No one. You'll not find it where someone's going to ring, uh, uh, you know, grass the blade runners. No one's going to be on the phone saying, we know who's doing it. Nobody. Why? Because the repercussions of fucking over someone like that are real high. It's like, they might think that the resistance to the Ulez and the Kaz is a politically motivated campaign it's not it's not you, you you're actually fucking with a group of people who aren't represented politically so if they start to scream and shout to the far right as to say get your people under control it's like we don't know who these people are who are doing this we don't represent them we pretend they don't exist and our ability to negotiate with them is zero and we don't know any of the names. It's like, uh, put it this way, a guy like Tommy Robinson turn up, put an event on, and get two, three thousand people probably turn up and be all screaming, ooh, you think he controls that mob? No. No, he doesn't. He doesn't know who they are, and he doesn't control them. They might turn up, but he ain't got the ability to say, go home, everyone, calm down, do as you're told. No, no. No one commands that. The only way that gets turned off is if bigger thugs and criminals come along and say, leave it with us, we'll sort it for you. Seriously. Oh, that alone, that, them forces will only bend down to muscle and there's none, is there? No one's stopping them. Who'd want to? Who's, who's got an interest in stopping those people? from tearing those posts down. They could be seen to be, in the wider context of things, the moral good, and have got right to. It's like, why, John? It's like, because, right, those affected by that chart, that, that Ulez, right, are already likely on their uppers. And the... Um, the price they're going to have to pay is extreme. And I mean extreme. And no one will be further than one degree of separation from someone that it screws over as to where there's now a ridiculous tale you can tell about the 65-year-old woman who goes and visits a 90-year-old mum every day and that journey's now going to cost her £100 a week, something... 
that tail that she can't walk but she can manage to drive a little automatic Nissan Micra because there's she only does 20 miles a week and she's an old lady so there's no point in her buying a new car that kind of story and that'd be true and it'd be fucking real and it's like and right you've ruined this woman's life or two people's lives here because of the lines on a map and it makes any argument against it that's like oh it's for everyone's good well they can enjoy the protection of clean air it's like do you think that'll matter to them now they're isolated do you think clean air is worth ruining their lives and you know there are those who think it's worth it so it's like fuck them they are the murdering tyrants that they would accuse you of being for your pollution aren't they they're killing people's lives and you only have to hear four or five ridiculous stories of people dragged from the bread line to the poorhouse to serve this goal WHO goal for emissions oh okay that the people who brought you COVID lockdowns and, and, and took you to the poorhouse to start with put you on the bread line now intends to finish you off and not even look back to assess the damage it's done and rely on the fact that your neighbourhoods are all fragmented so when the bailiffs come to take your stuff no one's going to help you when the council set the bailiffs on you for non-payment of your, your CAS charge or your US charges, no one's, they, they bank on the fact that no one's going to stop them. Because at the end of the day when people say, don't pay it, don't pay the charge. Well, they're never, people who say that are never there when the fucking heavies turn up saying we've got the right to enter your premises and use reasonable force. They're never there, those people who say don't pay. They're never there when they single you out on your own. So, to my mind, the sabotage of the cameras is the right move. It's like, it does strike me that you've given those who've got that cheeky criminal element going about and being like a huge swathe of the working class. You've given them now the tools to actually fight you like you did with breakfast, Brexit and they can do you over with a cordless drill and uh, some clippers, some cutters. You've given them a chance to hit you and they're not a group that can be reasoned with, switched off, switched on or off because they've got no leadership to negotiate with. They either win or they win. It's like, um, there's only one way this ends up, Sadiq Khan, we win. That's it. See what happens when you start to catch people who've been sabotaging the cameras and that they actually manage to manifest real world muscle from nowhere where complete strangers will actually turn out for them and they be then by then there'll be a million little politicians trying to jump on board and tap into the newfound muscle but none of them will fit the bill because the people you're dealing with don't give a fuck for the law they don't give a fuck for democracy they don't give a fuck for they give a fuck for survival Survival is what they give a fuck for. It's like, never thought I'd see a politician so foolish as to go up against the silent majority. Like, the silent majority, Jan. It's like, yes, the silent majority. If you think that Maybe two out of five of the working class would turn a blind eye to something unfortunate happening to, to council property. 
would not report it, would secretly go or fucking go up to him. If you think that's two out of five, in the largest demographic of people, I'd put it as to be the poor, the working class. They do not report people to the police. They do not report things stolen that's government property. They do not protect council property. They do not protect government property. They look out for their own part, which makes public property fair game. It's like you go up against that. It's like I, <laughs> over the years, I do like to drop the odd, let's say, moral conundrum for the people around me as to who's in the right and who's in the wrong. And when it comes to something like, uh, you know, the destruction or theft of council and government property, I'm usually in the absolute minority in saying that you shouldn't be fucking stealing from anyone. <laughs> the last boy scout. Reverend, fuck off. Every man on this aisle is in one way or another doing something that's a bit of a fiddle. To my mind. But you go up against those people. Thinking reassurance about something invisible will uh, placate that they've, the, 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 the very weakest have been targeted. There are those in the world, you know, and we see many of them who only really need an excuse to go out and do what they like doing. It's like, and you've taken them on. It's like, there's rarely mistakes made like that these days. I've known in the past where you'll get it where in certain parts of the world where um, people have underestimated the ingenuity of the insurgency. Put it that way. And it's a, a mistake that gets repeated, but I haven't seen it repeated in a while. Understand the, misunderstand the very nature of the people they're trying to protect. <clears throat> South Vietnam. Take it near how about Belfast? So I did think they'd stand for Ulay's cameras there. You think they'd stand for it? Just saying, do you, you think they those you think they'd stand for cameras? Like that. I don't think they would. I don't think it'd be tried. Surveillance? Here? No fucking way. See, I'm now to do with them. The, the, the force is beyond my control as well. I know that there's no way of turning off the criminal element if you go to war with them. I know. I'm like, don't go to war with those people. Most people get it. That's why we never really talk about anything meaningful in this fucking country. Fear of the repercussions as to what you know, the boogeyman might do, knowing that he's out there. The interests of the criminal in this country are generally served. Our state completely bends the knee to their demands and the demands of their kind. But now it's like you've declared war on them and you're underestimating what they're capable of. Good luck with that. 